Uh, with the March primary now less than two weeks away, there are a number of council seats up for grabs. Many eyes will be on the race for Chula Vista's District 4. There are six candidates on the ballot. However, one of those candidates, former council member Andrea Cardenas, just resigned from the council, though her name is still on the ballot. Other candidates include Delfina Gonzalez, Christina, Christine Brady, Cesar Fernandez, and Jose Sarmiento, and Rudy Ramirez. He joins us in studio right now to talk more about his priorities for District 4. If elected, Rudy, we appreciate you joining us here at Fox 5. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's talk a little bit about who you are. For the viewers out there who don't know you and want to learn a little bit more about you, you are a former council member and you have deep roots in Chula Vista. Yeah, lifelong uh, resident of District 4, where I now want to serve. Uh, my 94-year-old parents still live in the house where, um, where I was raised. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I've been motivated to serve, to come back. Uh, I've, as you said, I've, I sat on the council from 2006 to 2014 during a, a really difficult time in the history of the city. Um, the housing crisis was in full swing in those years. And so we learned how to work creatively and, and solve problems. And, and uh, District 4 has a lot of problems. It's been neglected, really, for the last eight years, I think. Tell us how you think that past experience, obviously eight years on the council, is going to give you a lot of experience to do exactly this if you are elected. How you think that informs you know, the decisions and information that you'll uh, try to make this go around if elected? Well, you know, after eight years, after being in the position, serving there, it, uh, you learn a lot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was active even before then. I mean, I was building sidewalks in southwest Chula Vista just as a community member. I served on the Board of Ethics uh, in the late 1990s you know, rewrote our ethics codes. And as you can imagine, it's, it needs to be redone. It, uh, some of the ethical problems that we have um, in the city of Chula Vista and the South Bay in general um, are, are pretty it's serious, I think. Uh, and it's something that needs to be addressed. So all my work then uh, and going forward, just as an example of somebody who's been there and, and, and served honorably and, uh, and got a lot of stuff done in, uh, in this district. So you've served before, but why run now? And, and really, um, did Cardenas have anything to do with that? Well, I, I mean, to the, not, not that she was you know, having the legal issues that she, she was. I, I mean, she's, uh, uh, you know, in her, her, in her letter to the city council in, uh, on her resignation, she, uh, she mentioned that she, you know, there were some um, uh, mental health issues. And so I don't really want to pile on her um, now and it's really the, the issue of ethics in Chula Vista um, is broader I think it's about a culture uh, uh, that's been lacking I think in the South Bay a political culture that's been al allowing to be permissive of a lot of the kinds of activities I mean her issues were you know had to do with private business deals but um, in general in city government um, I mean we have people um, who are not being forthright and disclosing you know um, their histories, and so we have people who don't even live in the district. I mean, you're familiar with some of these issues. I mean, they move into the district just to just to run for office, or you know, they have criminal convictions that that you know the public isn't necessarily made aware of, and so we have those kinds of issues still circulating, and so um, so there's a lot of work to be done. Um, I want to do it. I mean, it, it, there are a lot of issues. Uh, Harborside Park was really the thing I think that that. Uh, uh, pushed me over and decided to, to run again, um, and it's to some degree been resolved. I mean, if you if you know the the story is that they were going to close a city park yeah. uh, and try to uh, build condos, but for years uh, we had homeless encampments right there, right next to Harborside Elementary mm -hmm. School. I mean, imagine that we, that wouldn't be allowed in any other part of the city or you know across San Diego County, and so it's just the the unfairness, the lack of respect for this district that really motivates me to, to run. Okay, so on that subject, Rudy, if we can ask you, um, what was the homeless problem like when you last served on the council, dating back 10 plus mm -hmm. years? It was during the Great Recession, a lot of housing issues then. What was it like then as compared to what it's like now? And do you have a specific solution that might help address this problem? Well, it was completely different. Yeah, I mean, it, we really was almost non-existent. We, I mean, we always had those issues, but not to the degree that we have them now. I mean, in some ways, we get everything from the rest of the county when other cities decide to take, you know, bolder action. Um, it gets pushed down to Chula Vista. In District 4, mm -hmm. we have um, not one, but two um, uh, homeless shelters. And, and so you can imagine the, the ancillary impacts that that brings and that will bring to a community. 
And so uh, there's, it's, it's going to be a very serious issue in District 4. But, I mean, I, su I support the Sunbreak uh, Ranch uh, idea. I'm not sure how, how many reviewers are familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Bill Walton, uh, George Mullen have come up with a plan that's uh, very interesting. I mean, Chula Vista can serve, I think, as a regional leader uh, and coalescing um, all of the agencies, nonprofits, to address the, the, the problem, um, but certainly enforcing uh, camping rules, uh, just enforcing the law. I mean, if, if they had just been doing that in, uh, in Harborside Park, uh, we may not have ended up in the situation that we ended up um, where we had such such a bad situation there. I mean, it, it's not just about, in the situation of Har at Harborside Park, it's not just about people that are down on their luck, but I mean, there was all kinds of illegal activity, prostitution, drug use, and you know, just every kind of thing going on there, illegal activity going on there, practically on the campus of an elementary school. Yeah, right next Where else would that be allowed? Nobody else would have ever allow that to occur in their community. And so um, those are the things that motivate me to go and fix and, and address. Lots of issues obviously facing, and just very quickly before we go, Chula Vista did suffer a little bit of damage, actually a lot of damage, uh, in the recent storms. How did you think the city handled it, and would you have done anything different? You know, those sorts of issues are long-term issues. It's about uh, really expensive infrastructure. And uh, as, I, as we were talking earlier, it, you know, when I served, we were hurting for money. Um, they had a, uh, a ballot measure that passed money for infrastructure. They should be spending that well. And so I'm hoping that they're, they're going to be moving on some of the stormwater issues that we're now discovering we have. All right, Rudy Ramirez, we appreciate uh, your time in here. We wish you the best of luck. Two weeks from yesterday yeah. is, uh, is Election Day. And like you said, votes are already being cast uh, as we speak. So thank yeah. you and, and best of luck to you. Thank, thank you very much. You. Right. All right. Coming up in the next hour, you'll hear from another candidate vying for Chula Vista's District 4 seat. Christine Brady joins us live in studio at 530 tonight.